my dear friend and at times nemesis, the great Chris Broussard. Bru, how are you doing, my friend? I am great. Look, man, I was all set to come on here and give you props for finally, finally having a good basketball take when you said LeBron's the front runner for the MVP, but you went overboard Mm -hmm. and you said it's not even close. Nobody else is even in the conversation. It's a runaway. Look, it's close. He is neck and neck with Joel Embiid. And right now I'd give it to LeBron slightly, but here's why. Because Embiid's missed five games. And Embiid is on pace to play in an 82-game season, 66 games. Not in the last 42, 43 years has anyone played fewer than 71 games in a full season and won MVP. So he may miss too many games to win MVP, but that's the only advantage right now LeBron has over it. Well, and he's playing better, and his team's better, and he's the better player, and he's played all the games. So, yeah, so I we don't actually know that agree. He's, play, he's we playing agree. great, but Embiid is, oh, my gosh, Embiid is playing lights out. Lights well, out, both I, you know of what? the floor. I, a thousand percent. Both guys actually are playing great on both ends of the court, but we agree there. But I'm glad you're mentioning Joel Embiid because he plays for a team in the East that actually could make the finals. My pick to make the finals as opposed to a team about 90 minutes northeast of where he plays who has no shot whatsoever of making the finals, and that's the Brooklyn Nets. So let's talk about the Nets for a moment if we can, Chris. Because I heard Kyrie's comments, and I I know folks like to make it as if this is about effort. What if their defensive issues are about personnel? What if they just don't have the horses to be anything other than a horrible defensive team. It's not just personnel. Obviously, these guys aren't great defenders, but Kevin Durant can defend. Kyrie Irving has the athleticism and strength to defend. And and I'm going to give Kyrie a little credit. The last several games, I'm not saying he's all of a sudden become, you know, Draymond Green in his prime, but he is getting down in the defensive stance taking on the challenge in many cases of trying to guard better, usually against better teams. You're throwing all these numbers out. What you're not throwing out is that these Nets, with all their different lineups, with KD out here, with Harden not even on the team here, with Kyrie missing games, they are 7-1 against teams with a winning record. That includes Utah, Denver, Boston, the Clippers, Milwaukee, your 76ers. They've beaten every elite team in the league except the Lakers who they haven't played yet. So they, and their defense, Nick, is better against those teams. Their problem is they're taking teams lightly. They're lollygagging at times. And every bad team is playing their Super Bowl against the the Ballyhooed Brooklyn Nets. But when they put their game face on, Against the elite teams, they bring it. And look, I'm not trying to dismiss their defensive issues. They got problems there. But their offense is so good, and their defense can improve to some degree where I think they can make up for it on the offensive end. Yeah, I mean, last year we saw the greatest, the most efficient, highest scoring offense in NBA history in the Dallas Mavericks, and they went out in the first round because they couldn't defend anybody, and this defense I think is worse than the Mavs defense last year. I told you before the year this was going to be a bottom five defense, and you laughed at me. Yeah, you, I think you asked me how I had the unmitigated gall to say it such a, a thing. Team, they currently man. sit here today, they sit here today 27th in defense, and 30th since the Harden trade. I, the, and I, I applaud you for saying Kyrie at least is trying on that end, but he still can't do it. So here is my, I want to follow up here. Are you not getting a little slight deja vu to last year's Clippers? Different reasons, but it's like once they all get together, right. once they play together, what, when they take teams seriously, that's when they'll be fine. Don't trust me. Doesn't it remind you a little <laughs> bit of another team that had done nothing together and was crowned by a lot of people? 
Look, that's legit. And I said this, I think, before the season even started, that the Clippers should be a cautionary tale for the Nets. No question about it. Don't yep. think just because you're great on paper that you're going to get it all done. And it takes time to get teams together. Look, Nick, I'm not picking Brooklyn to win it. I'm picking them to win the East, but to lose to the Lakers in the finals. History tells us you rarely put a team together in one year that wins it all. And whether it was the big three in Miami, you know, it just rarely happens. And so, yeah, they, they, they got some, you know, a lot of obstacles to overcome. But what they don't have that it seems that the Clippers had are problems in the locker room. And I've, I've always, we've all wondered, okay, is Kyrie's head going to always be in the right place? We already saw him go AWOL for a couple of weeks. So that's something you have to worry about. What, what is pleasantly surprising to me is that offensively they haven't had any issues. James Harden has been fully content to sh- get his Magic Johnson on and be a tremendous point yep. guard, getting that's close right. to triple doubles every night. And the other two guys, Durant and Kyrie, are off the ball scoring. But they, they, they got to get the defense together. But remember, Nick, they also are going to add some players. I don't know if they can get him. They're obviously holding How? out the hope that they can get Andre Drummond, who would help the rebound if he gets bought out. I don't know that it'll happen. But then okay. there's Andre Robertson and, and Michael Kidd Gilchrist, maybe guys they can go after and get that could help them to some degree on the defensive. They don't need to be uh, the, the Golden State Warriors in their prime defensively, Nick. They just need to be close to adequate because that offense is absolutely unstoppable, and you know it. Yeah, they, they're going to add a guy at the deadline. Maybe they could add, oh, I don't know, a Marcus Morris at the deadline like the Clippers did last year, and it saved them. Oh, wait. Um, all right, so listen, I, I actually think let – me, let me ask you one more Nets question, and then we can move on from it. If there were no relationships to worry about, if it wasn't this is my guy, this is – do you think they'd be better, best served if they could trade – Kyrie Irving for Kyle Lowry. Oh, look, that, that's a good trade. I mean, Kyrie's a better player. I don't, think, I don't even think you would deny that. Yep, I, know I agree. I think he's right I agree with that. Your, your, your strange tears. No, yeah. my pyramid. But yeah. he, obviously, he obviously would bring defense, better defense. He is a winner just like Kyrie is who has his championship. Um, it's hard to argue with that. It's hard to argue with that. Look, they could have stayed as they were and not even traded for James Harden, Nick, and been a great yep. team. I mean, they would have been better defensively, even though you didn't think at that time they'd even be good defensively. But uh, they, I, I wouldn't, I think that would be a good trade, as great as Kyrie is, because they don't need more offense. They need more defense. So I, I could go with that. They need more defense and a guy who made, like, they, I think they need to defer more to Durant. Like, and Lowry's not trying to take a bunch of shots. Like, the, you, you, they what have fit seamlessly together. he points I, a game? Yeah, it is on, right, on unbelievable efficiency. I just feel like it should skew even more his way. I think he's been that good. All right, let's move off the Nets. It is very rare we have a retired basketball player with a good take on the modern game. Kevin Garnett wow. had one. Kevin Garnett, well, no, listen, it's amazing for all these retired guys. The league was no good before they got there, was no good after they left. It was only good when they were playing. It's amazing how that works. KG, though, came out and said to the New York Times, man, I'm telling you, you got to run from corner to corner. You got to have so much, you got to understand angles. You got to have so much conditioning. I think it's harder to play today than at any other time. What did you think of what Kevin Garnett said? First of all, America, let me tell you why Nick Wright loves this take so much. And he may not say it. He didn't say it just then. But this, for him, he thinks this makes his LeBron James is the GOAT argument better. LeBron is playing against better players than Michael Jordan did. That is what this is all all about. He wants to diminish Jordan's era and now we can say even Kevin Garnett said it's LeBron Kevin Garnett. was beating better players. It's Kevin Garnett, not So me. here, look, I love um, KG. He usually has very astute takes. He is, an, he is a basketball savant. But I'm surprised at yeah. this. 
KG is wrong. And, and I've talked to other players from that era that talk about the pace of play and how it's so fast and that that would be challenging. And I'll give you this, Nick. Today's players are better distance shooters. They shoot the three far better, obviously. They have better ball handling skills, and they're more athletic. Outside of that, they, they don't do anything better. They don't play five-man basketball generally better. They don't play post-basketball offensively or defensively better. They, how would they handle the hand check? So I would turn it around and say, could today's players play back in that era? Because when you talk about pace, today's players play. We, we got one guy in the whole league, Nick, averaging more than 37 minutes a game. Or, or playing 37 or more minutes. That's James Harden. Everybody else is below 36, 36 or below. Back in the day when KG played in the league, it was commonplace for guys to play 38, 39, 37, 40 minutes a night. The superstars. Yeah, so all you have to do if the pace is faster, okay, now I'm playing 33 minutes at a faster pace versus 38 at a slower pace. So that's, that can make up for the pace of play that KG and others are concerned about. But how would today's players handle hand checking? Okay, because all those three-pointers, you're getting all these open looks it's from three. You're not getting them if I can put my hands Can we my stop hands acting on you. like hand how checking are you, how was are a billy club? We act like hand checking how was a lightsaber. Oh, like you just, they just wheeled it billy, and guys got amputated. It was, it was this. It was this. That's hand what it was. checking could Nick, deal with it. was they the jab. Uh-huh. Hand checking was the jab. The billy club, the hook came in the lane. How we we act like today's players, oh my gosh, you've got one post player in there. You can't drive. The the floor's not open. There's no room in the lane. Man, please, people in the back in the day were driving with seven guys in the paint, three from your team, four from the other team, and finishing with the threat of getting hammered. Could these dudes today handle that? They they get knocked down and they want to stay down for three minutes and, and act so like they're about silly. to have a season in the injury. How could this they handle so post play? How could they defend post play? They they can't stop Zion Williamson in the paint. They're gonna stop Shaq. They're gonna stop KG. Oh, yeah. that's, they're gonna that's stop a, Alonzo Ward. I mean, take. I'm just saying. It's, KG it's couldn't great shoot take. like I love these it. dudes. You're right. So I hear you. You're, you're, you're right. Zion Williamson would have really struggled to score against Paul McCaskey no. in the 80s. Like, he would have, he, it would have been tough for him. You, you like bring up Paul McCaskey. Like, <laughs> the, I mean, I just, of all I just the people you could have brought up. Mind. From it's KG's the first era, name. Dwight I, Howard in his I prime, Alonzo Mourning. You I mean, bring up Paul I McCaskey. Can't. I I, well, I was going it's further a, back. Look, I just, it's a it totally different. Uh-huh. It's a totally different game. I will give you that. But just like yesteryear's yeah. players would have had to adjust, and you're right, KG couldn't shoot the three and all that. But these guys would have had to adjust to playing in that era too, and I I don't think they would have mm-hmm. adjusted as well either. Okay. All right. Well, so I thought you were gonna here. Say KG one, can I have one more thing? Right. Can I have one yeah. more thing? Yeah. Can you I have, have one more thing? Whatever you want. There were sharp shooters back in the day: Allen Houston, Michael Red, Chris Mullin, even Joe Dumars, who wasn't known as a tremendous mm-hmm. three-point shooter, Mark could Price. shoot the three well. Yeah. If they if they shot it as much as the guys today, then they could do similar things. Back then, if you missed two threes in a row. Your coach was taking you out or your teammates were looking at you funny like, dude, get the ball inside. So that adds into it too the freedom that these guys feel to just throw up any type of shot they want. I I am shocked that KG dismissing his countrymen the way he did. The point is not that the guys are just better shooters now. It's that if you watch a game from, for example, the 80s, where, by the way, the 80s had the fastest pace of play of any decade post the 60s. Like the 60s, the Oscar Robertson year, they were just sprinting up and down right. the court. They, they but 80s faster down. than yeah. the 90s, Shooting 2000s, the and faster than 2010s. But it is, not, it is not just about shooting. It's not just about pace. It's about off-ball movement and off-ball defense was so archaic 
guys, they didn't just smoke cigarettes at halftime. They could have smoked cigarettes while watching someone else play defense standing in the corner because nothing was happening. Watch those finals. They're, nobody's moving off the ball. Do you, everyone's just playing it in the lane, waiting for someone to drive, and then Rick Mahorn comes and clubs you in the head, and they call it good defense. It's insanity. It, and KG gets it, and there's so much nostalgia tied to it, and I didn't make this about LeBron, but you took it there. This idea Am that I when wrong? We're, if we are going to make Am it... Am I wrong? Lo, no, you are wrong, <laughs> but I will meet you on your turf because you're kind enough to talk to me twice today. This idea, when we are talking about LeBron versus Jordan, that the biggest, strongest superstar ever, that he would have struggled with hand-checking... That if, oh my God, if LeBron James had Tim Hardaway Sr. putting the putting the, the claw on him, what would he have done? And to totally disregard that he would have also been allowed to hand check. The 6'8 super freak could have been hand checking as well. It's just insanity. Total and abject insanity. Did but, I say... I, did I ahead. say anything about LeBron struggling in the 80s or 90s? No. Uh, you, I mentioned you did. players in you did. general. I'm not. Of course, LeBron wouldn't struggle, but a lot of these uh -huh. other guys who have the freedom to run around, move around without any, you know, physicality, they yeah. would struggle. You had. You you're heard taking even a shot at Steph. Jacks. I think he would. You're taking a shot at Steph. No, I, I love know it. Steph. You just won't say Steph his name. Steph is the greatest like small player ever. You're saying Steph couldn't do Steph it. Steph is the greatest. Steph couldn't do it. Steph is the greatest small player <laughs> ever. And, and for you to say guys oh, wow. didn't move without the basketball in the 80s, sure, they had post players, but they also moved mm -hmm. without the ball. Nick, they ran plays actually back then. It was, they don't oh, move without the God. ball now outside of Golden State and a few other weave. places. They play themselves on the three-point line run, and run wait weave. for a high pick and roll or drive and kick. I, That's it. Broussard, I love you. I have to go. I I don't know if you disrespected <laughs> LeBron, Steph, or Isaiah Thomas no, more, the original Isaiah. You heard that, Zeke? He said Steph's the greatest small player ever. Isaiah's Take second. that, Isaiah Thomas. I'll talk to you later. Isaiah knows. Okay, He's okay. I, Allen Iverson, I hope you're listening. You, you just fell down a list. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.